All right, let's uh, get this monitor on. So we're here with this thing, the SPL monitor. Now SPL is known for more professional grade gear. Studio monitor setups, not even speakers, like the actual monitoring consoles. And I'm um, trying to find this. This was sent to me by a user, if you're a fan of mine and a patron of mine. And you're like, hey, Zeos, I'm going to buy this thing. Do you want it first? I will usually say yes. So if you're interested in becoming a patron of mine, uh, patron and subscribe star linked in the description. Tons of benefits, which I usually explain at the end. We'll see if I can dot them throughout this video, because this thing is nutto. Nutso? Nutso is more like I'm going for. Nutto is not a thing. Um, it either costs $2,300 or $1,800 or that's it. I get found it on a bunch of sites in Europe. It's a much more popular in Europe and it's just, all right, it's just a headphone app, right? There you go. Let's, let's reduce it down to the simplest fact. It takes signal in either through one of two XLR inputs or an RCA input and it gives you an XLR output. I think it gives you a second RCA output. Double checking with my fingertips. Ooh, there's knobs and switches. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the, the rawest form of things. It's, it's an expensive headphone amplifier made in Germany. I've been there. The beer is fantastic. Um, that said, there's a fuckload of switches and knobs and switches and knobs and dials and buttons. Oh my God. Actually, there are no buttons. I lied. There's only knobs and switches and one quarter inch headphone out. And here's the thing. This is the Fonitor 2. If we go to Mimic Audio, which I will link in the description, because um, I like Mimic Audio, but they only seem to have three SPL things. They're all Fonitors. Which is a weird, it's a f. Get it? Because it's pH monitor, phone monitor, headphone monitor. Is that what they're trying to say? And then one is the SE for thirteen hundred. One is the X for twenty six hundred, and one is the XE for twenty two hundred. So I don't know. And they all have different knobs and switches and buttons and dials. And in fact, these two have four pin XLR outputs and a quarter inch, which makes me think that they're newer models. Maybe I don't know. Because having only a quarter inch in this day and age, you know, even if you're doing like the Atom 2, I have the JDS Labs Atom 2 ready for review. It's fucking gorgeous. It has a 4.4. It's not balanced, but it gives you the option because everything that I use uses that plug. And I am using my newly decorated and repaired Empyrean 2. Look at that. I got the gold marker out. I filled in the thing with white. I got the red, the blue. These are all the Tacony nuggets because I'm using the pads from the Elite. Ah. Uh, if you're going to fonitor, fonitor with something that's serious. And like I said in the review of this headphone, the Empyrean 2, it actually cares about amplification, finally. I say that like, I say that in both like the final, like it, here's the thing. The reason the Empyrean Elite sat up on that shelf there in the middle, dead center on that clear thing, which they're not currently, they're currently over there. But the reason they sat there and never came out for reviews is because they don't change when you put it on a different amplifier setup or a different DAC setup or a different anything setup. They were great on everything, so they're not good for my job. These, however, which came out all the fucking time, sat next to it and came out all the fucking time because the Abyss Dianas, uh, TCLEV2, I don't know, whatever one it is, this one cares about, this one insists you only give it the finest in Perrier water slash amplification. So I pull it out. So I pulled it out for this one. I pulled this out for this one because now this will get to be used my little this is going to get abused so good on the channel oh you're going to get so abused links to these in the description and um i needed to test I, you should i should have set up a set of speakers to do the testing with the knobs we've got to get to the knobs and the switches and the buttons and the dials but instead of going with that the line outputs on this are going into the topping la90 discrete because i know this amplifier and i'm plugging that into a set of headphones. And I've also got a set of IEMs here. If you're not watching any of your fetish channel, you should. Because you know what these are? You know what this is? This is a $600 beautifully bejeweled um, Viking Weave cable, which has got his new website up. So check out vikingweave.com. I think it's vikingweavecables.com, something like that. Anyway, I got this beautiful $600 cable on a $130 set of 10 IEMs because they're fucking amazing. So we're testing with those a little bit. 
let's look at the back because it's way less interesting than the front. And do I have to do, I have to, I can't, I can't. Let's take a walk. Take the fucking walk. Zeus, you need exercise during these reviews anyway. I'll even take the camera off my head to give you guys a better view of this fucking guy. Power voltage switch. XLR outputs. RCA input. XLR input. XLR input. V end. There's a learn button. The learn button, uh, point your remote at the VUs and press a button for volume down. LED, repeat and press, press volume down. So you can hear that is the best thing about anything I've ever known. In fact, do we have, all right, you know what? We'll be dicks about it. We'll teach it with the remote that I don't usually teach other things with. Or you know what, fuck that. Keep my Emotive remote virgin. Quest style remote? I did find it. I did the review of the 15 on my camp on the remote. It was literally sitting down there, sitting, sitting down there. So we could take this. Nah, fuck it, we're gonna do the real one. Let's see, volume up. So we're gonna find the button. All right. I have no idea what it's doing. I should have done this off camera. Oh, it's doing volume down. It's just stuck doing volume down, now up. Okay, hold on, wait. I didn't, I, I, cancel. We read instructions. They're written on the back and I hadn't tried this before. So basically you hit the button, these flash, and then they flash once. You keep hitting the same volume down, specifically volume down button, over and over that you want to use for volume down until it blinks three times. Then stop hitting volume down, which is what I didn't do. Then hit volume up and keep hitting it over and over and over until it flashes three times. And now, oh, I get to use my stick. Physical volume knobs that turn is such a rare thing, but I get to keep my fucking cool looking chopstick around to demonstrate. Oh yeah, and I'm just using any, you can use any remote for that. Have you started to understand? Oh God, I just smashed it in. Oh no, the damage. You can just. Okay, enough fucking around. Even though that's what you're here for, Zeo's fucking around. So now we've got a remote control and you could use anything. And that's the only option you could actually set because everything else is a physical knob that you have to physically turn or switch here. So you could integrate it much easily, much more easily into your theater or listening space using an any old remote with two buttons that aren't really used. There you go. Cover the back, basic power, that interesting learning remote button. One output, which you have going to here, and then three inputs. And here, I, we'll start with the simplest of switches. There's no power switch here, <laughs> I haven't noticed. Um, R RCA, XLR2, XLR1. Now, as a source today, because I'm running it through testing phases, I have the socketed J2 DAC from Gishelli Labs in a purple heart case that weighs way more than it fucking should. Like I picked this up and I thought it was do they include lead on the bottom of it? And I've changed out the things I'm testing. The socketed means I can swap out the op amps and I've got a whole pile of op amps. I'm switching into it. So this is my source total. I did have a, another DAC. I had the uh, Denifrips in there, but it was hard to do the volume balancing because I'm actually running this. If you don't know anything about the Gishelli Labs DAC, you can set the output voltage to three different steps, full voltage, two out of three, and then one out of three in case your amp is extremely powerful, which this is. So I'm running a two out of three. So I'm actually lowering the output that it would get from a normal DAC because I was only be able to get, like I was controlling headphones, like hard to drive headphones. And I was like, yeah, it's too loud. And I'm like, that's that's insane. There is no high low gain on this amplifier either. In fact, I should probably mention the fact like the, the, the whole reason this exists and I have the monitor side up is because 
Internally, headphone amplifiers usually run at a reduced voltage. They have a bunch of transformers in them. They run at, you know, 15 volts or as much as 30 volts, or the, which is the swing between like push and pull. And it, I don't want to have to explain it because it's very difficult to explain. All you got to know is most headphone amplifiers are running less than 120 volts internally. This is running 120 volts internally. I think that's unique in the space, which means it'll never, ever, ever run out of like violence to throw at things. Um, I have tested this with, where are my babies? Come with me and you'll see in a world of double-sided tungsten, we will sing, find a cable. Where did you put it, you dumbass? Oh, there's a cable for it right there. Again, another Viking weave cable. This one comes with tungsten. So I'm gonna use this to discern what's going on in front. I know you're excited. I know you wanna know all about the fucking soundstage switches and the crossfeed switches. We're getting to it. I still have to treat this like it's just an amplifier first. All right, that's my job. My job is to overlook all the fancy fucking bullshit things, compliment it on its looks, its build, its sound raw dog, it's power output, raw dog, and then worry about the insane amounts of shit you could fuck with. Timestamps, if you want to skip to what I'm talking about, the insane amounts of shit you can fuck with. Um, so that's max. I'm gonna I'm gonna set this DAC back up to have full output instead of reduced output. And we are on the XLR input on a quiet track. It just, it wants to, that's as loud as I can get him to go. So let's lower this here, let's see something else. Unplug this, let's plug this into the LA90 Discrete, which I currently have the volume knob disabled because I'm setting this to be a power amp and this is the preamp. If I switch the output, all right, so we've gone through one switch already, the second switch. Instead of source, we have output. Picture of a headphone, picture of a, uh, a mute, which turns it red, which is what I had at the beginning. It was muted, it just turns that red, which is fucking sweet. And all the other, it should be a different color for speaker output. Just so you could visually tell apart if like you're about to blow up your speakers or you're about to blow up your headphones. It should be like green, red, and then yellow, and it should be the full stop sign, but it's not. So. That's better. Actually, if I put this on high gain. Okay, now we're actually able to run tungsten. So this is not capable of running tungsten on its own. You're gonna need, I would honestly recommend a speaker amp like this, although with more than 50 watts, I've got that monster over there with 150 watts. Even the double-sided could use a little bit of like, just. Okay, ah, oh, fuck, all right, I flipped the switch. All right, I'm taking tungsten off. Links to tungsten. Even though he right now he's currently releasing um, like five pairs a, a a week or every other every other week, and they sell out in two seconds. And I'm not saying two seconds like ha 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 like two seconds. Though he told me he literally couldn't hit the end button fast enough, and I ended up selling like seven of them in two minutes. Two minutes. Um, okay, going back, we're turning this back down one notch and gain. I'm setting this back down to low gain so I don't blow anything up. That's down, plugging you back in. Let's talk about everything on the front of this. Are you ready? Volume knob, that's fine, that makes sense. You have a mono stereo switch that also switches to ladder, ladder, laterality, ladder, laterality, okay. Unique New York, New unique New York. Laterality, which is a balance control. It's German though, and balance control isn't good enough. And actually, that's not what this is. It's specifically a lateral control, so that if you're using it with studio monitors out the output, and you're slightly offset from your studio monitors, you're adjusting the laterality of that. So it's not like all the way right, all the way left. It's a very gentle nudge 
of the center position. You can do it on headphones, not necessarily. If you have, if you're hard of hearing in one ear slightly more than the other, you have to accept that fact. My father is hard of hearing in one ear and not the other, but he took him forever to figure out like, oh, I should probably adjust the balance on things to enjoy things. So like, you have to come to terms with it. You have a laterality switch to be like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, adjust that um, so it's very gentle it almost doesn't sound like it's working unless you have a specific song with a good center image and you're can able able to pan it um, to the right of that so uh, mono by the way is great for when you're setting up speakers you you put them in you listen to stereo and it's like huh I wonder if that's good put in a good song with a good center image put it to mono oh she's singing slightly to the left move that speaker further back or further forward, or move this speaker further forward. That's how you adjust for the center image. You have to have a mono. E you either have to switch your player to mono, your source to mono, or this will just switch to mono, which is nice. To the right of that, after the center, left, right, vertically, shut up, is your VU calibration. Now, what I have it set to right now, let's see, we got to switch to a song or a part of a song that actually has music playing. Very little motion here. If I do this, did the music stop? No, that's the most sensitive. Is zero is the most sensitive. Yeah, birdie nom nom. That'll that'll get the juices flowing. Let's get some birdie mo birdie nom nom. So, just because I'm on the XLR, if I go to RCA, it's very very weak. Like, it's either bashes to the top or doesn't. Is it even playing music right now? Did I fuck something up? Did I lower this down all the way? Hold on. Three. One. All right, there it is. This adjusts the calibration of that. Plus 12 means that your source is very loud and you need the, the gauge to be less responsive. And then it goes to plus six and then to zero. Now, the way I have that set up, I actually was running it in plus six, but I think zero might actually be better, especially on the RCA input. Why am I confused and hallucinating? Yeah, I wish I wish they were more controllable, but having that adjustment is fine. Um, a lot of times I was finding with the other deck, oh, oh, I'm done. Some, oh, I'm super dumb. Okay, let me explain how I'm, my dumbness. I usually edit, you know, people edit when they make mistakes. I'm dumb. I made a mistake. These buttons here are already defined on my FLIR, linked in the description, that controls the master volume output of my food bar. So it literally was lowering the, so if I was raising, as I'm raising the volume here, raises the volume there. As I lower the volume here, it was lowering the volume there, which caused it to be like 16 dB down. So let's ignore the remote control. This unit's not staying with me. It's going back to the user. So that's fine. It's all fine. So yeah, you set your calibration. And there, there's the usual thing where it's bouncing off the tippy top. You plug it down to there and you get a little bit more natural, but still hitting the tippy top. You put it down to plus 12. And that actually makes them like, that's an average volume song. And they're just, they're doing the correct thing. So you just adjust that for your input source. I'm using a reduced input from the Gishelli. So that's where that has to be is on plus 12. Are we done with this right side? Because this is the, the, the thing is we're going to explore and expand our horizons, literally or laterally, lateral, shut the fuck up. Um, <sighs> switches or knobs. These two switches we covered, source and output. These two switches are very basic. Well, this one's weird, but to this one, it's on solo. There's left and right and off. The center is off. If I put the headphones on while Iggy and the Stooges is playing and I switch it to solo right, only the right channel's playing. If I switch it to solo left, only the left channel's playing. If I switch it to off, they're both playing. Very specific setting up studio monitor sort of thing. Like, wait, did I just hear a tick in the left mic for this vocalist? Only listen to left channel. In fact, where's the other button that uh, you could switch to mono? Let me see something. If you switch to mono, you don't get to separate left and right. It's still mono. It doesn't, 
it doesn't combine the channels and move them both to left and right. Instead, it just combines the channels and then doesn't do anything anymore. So this actually defeats this or this. The one below it, the one that is a, uh, a zero or an O with a strike through, that's inverted phase. This, so these headphones, the story behind these headphones and why they got two reviews in this channel is one of the drivers internally, since they were hand making the first set, and this is set number two, one of the drivers was soldered inverted phase. Positive was negative, negative was positive in one side, which caused it to do sound so fucking weird. Well, if you wanted to repair that without having to resolder, I could have simply gone like this. And there, the right channel is now out of phase. And I could have done off and left channel, and the left channel would have been out of phase. Both would have worked to make the headphone either entirely out of phase or not. Now, I'm not a professional music masterer, even though I've made so many sound demos at this point, I should be. But um, that is one way that you can, as a professional, analyze a track to say, okay, is something happening that's weird here? You invert the phase of one side. I don't understand it. Someone in the comments can go and please spill your guts. Help people up. This video will get 10,000 views at some point, and someone might read and go, oh, that's a really, really great idea on how to repair and fix and discover flaws. So solo left and right, I feel like you're not gonna use very often, unless it's like a rattle or something and you wanna isolate it. The inverted face thing, you're probably not gonna use very often, just because, unless you're a professional doing this, and you, I feel like the people who are watching this are mostly enthusiasts, maybe 88% enthusiasts, 12% professional. So now we've got that done. We've got actually all four of these switches done. But don't worry, you enthusiasts, I got you fam. This center, this crossfeed, this angle. These three switches and these three knobs and this switch can control either the crossfeed and the angle or all, which is crossfeed, angle, and center. If you don't know what crossfeed is, I'll explain it to you like it's 2017 and I was explaining it in 2017. When you listen to a headphone, um, you hear the left channel and the right channel and you put them on your head and if somebody decides to make something happen only in the left channel, only your left ear hears it. This all makes sense, correct? Now what happens if I'm listening to speakers, right? That set of clips right there, the RP150Ms. If someone plays that track with just left channel shit out of that speaker, both of my ears are hearing it. This one, the right one, hearing it slightly delayed, but you're still hearing it. And what that does, it allows me to close my eyes as a human being and say, where's the sound coming from? Left channel, there, like right there. It's, I, could, I could hear it. Because you're hearing it from both. If you play a headphone with just left channel, where's the sound coming from? Uh, just sort of the side of your head. So it kind of, your brain's not designed to wear headphones. Humans were never, there's never a situation where Kate, where Neanderthal man was like, ugh, and he hears just shit out of his left ear. Unless he put his ear against a hole in a stone wall and his right ear was also shattered by a rock during a fight with Tuk Tuk. You know, that was a brutal fight with Tuk Tuk in negative 29,000 BC. Um, anyway. Humans are supposed to hear from both ears all the time, forever. Speakers should sound more natural. If you're a headphone guy, the reason you're a headphone guy is because most music, most music is designed that whatever's playing comes out of both. And yes, they could vary and be 80% here and 20% there, but for natural, for the, the human condition's sake, you could hear both. If it's 50-50, something sounds like it's dead in front of you. Now, that's the same for speakers. They usually... You don't have to, though. That's the thing. If they were like, this CD is mastered for speakers, they could fuck with you, and they could move things that are completely left channel and completely right channel. But also, people who are making music don't give a shit right now. They probably never gave a shit. They're just going to make whatever sounds good to them, and they're going to be done with it. And what that means is that there might be tracks where things are unnatural sounding where everything seems too biased left or biased right, doesn't feel natural, doesn't feel like you're wearing, like you're using speakers, it feels like you're wearing headphones. So you're getting that effect of sound coming from both sides of you. Now yes, different headphones can have different effects on the enjoyment of sound and the position of sound based on how they're designed. But crossfeed, we're still on crossfeed now, which is just this minimum, it goes minimum two, three, four, five maximum. So there's six levels. 
That is how much of the left is in the right and the right is in the left. So it doesn't like lower it. It just bleeds some of this into that or it bleeds some of that into this. And that's what CrossFeed is. And you can get plugins for FUBAR and do it for fucking free. In fact, you can get plugins for Media Player Classic and do it for free if you watch a lot of videos. Which TV shows and movies, I will say, way more adherent to the strictly right, strictly left school because they're assuming you're watching it on speakers. So CrossFeed, amazing movies, TV shows, and gaming. Actually, gaming, gaming's 50-50 because if they have specific headphone modes, they should be doing this already. They should be cross-feeding in the game to give you locational data this way. The other switches are a little bit weirder. Crossfeed's basic. I can explain crossfeed. Let's go to a visual representation. By the way, very strangely, weirdly screwed up girl with gun in uniform. It's, can't go wrong with that. So, okay, yeah, crossfeed, they're explaining with that. Here is what the angle is doing. So now, if we're trying to make headphones sound like speakers, or speakers sound like more speakers, where those speakers are set up, whether you're listening to the uh, triangle, uh, what the fuck were those? LNO1As, of the LNO1As. So obviously the Yamos are mono, Bucard S200s are real too close together. You got those which are slightly further apart. You got some more Bucards, you got the Klipsch, and let's look at the Swan M5As that are all the way at the end. So there is what you could adjust with this knob. This. I wouldn't even call it soundstage. If my description of soundstage is sounds that are happening outside of your headphone, and presumably, again, people are buying this for headphones. Because this doesn't affect soundstage. This affects literally the angle of your imaging to the point where if you set that to 15 which would be those two speakers there and i turn this on just cross fade and angle just those two we're gonna we'll get to the last knob in a second but if i turn the cross fade to minimum so we're not fucking with cross fade and the angle to the narrowest 15 degrees and i get to a song that has volume And then I do this. Yeah. Basically, this knob can go from almost mono, where I flipped a switch to mono, and it sounded like it went. Uh, it went from from it went from the the purple speakers to the white speakers to the purple speakers to the white speakers. Mono, barely not mono, and that's without crossfeed. If I crank crossfeed, and then minimize the angle, and then hit play again. I literally cannot tell a difference between switching this from stereo to mono, right? That essentially makes your music mono, which everyone's going, Zeus, but I don't want my music to be mono. That's dumb. Correct mundo. Relax. Relax. We've got one more knob to fuck with things. But I do not recommend going whoop on the top two. You want to either leave the crossfade off because the angularity adjustment kind of replaces crossfade in a way where if I turn the knob... Why, by the way, this is, uh, what is this? Triphonic Parks on Fire from the Emergence LP. Yeah, it ba when I got these headphones and they weren't working, the term used for what they sounded like was the sound soundstage collapsed. And that's what it seems like this knob does. This is collapsing the soundstage. 90 degrees being normal and as soon as you turn on the mode knob or the matrix knob you're now going from 90 to 75 automatically 55 40 30 22 15 so if you want to focus your music if you have extremely wide <coughs> soundstage headphones and you want to focus them this knob will do that it's very similar to what the black ice audio f30 f360 does with its soundstage knob although that's a tube and just wildly more dramatic than this. And it's not doing specific angles. It's like very fucking narrow. So that's, that's you get drunk or high and then that happens there. This is German. We are precise. I need exactly 30 degrees. Put it to 30 degrees. I would not use the crossfeed and the angle at the same time almost ever. The last switch, however, is center. So let me go back and brush up on what fucking center does. 
Is it even in here? I'm gonna have to pause this and read. The list is for you. Oh, there we go. Okay. So. To make the list, I'm going to read this in a fake German accent. I apologize to Germans all over the internet, whether you're in Germany or in America or in Canada or Australia. I apologize. <clears throat> to make the listening experience even more perfect, the level of the center of the stereo image needs to be attenuated when the phonotone matrix is activated. Is active. <clears throat> um, this ensures that not only the position of all sound sources is correct, but also their volume. In the most monitor devices, this value is set to a fixed attenuation of negative 1 dB, which is the best choice for getting an authentic representation of the soundstage. Only monitor 2, designed for the most advanced mixing and mastering applications, allows to adjust the center level in 0.3 decibel steps with the center switch build center. So there you go. So you could actually adjust the center. So normally, they just said it was the center is negative one. So there is no negative one on this. You can't disable that switch except by going, you either have everything disabled, uh, cross-feed and thing. So then this type is disabled. But once you flip this over to all, you're automatically including these and you're automatically including this. And you could adjust from negative two. It's a weird one. Negative two to negative 1.6, to negative 1.2, to negative 0.9. So now we've gone past negative one. I don't know why it's not 1.1 and negative 0.9, but it's 1.2 and 0.9, negative 0.6 and negative 0.3. So that adjusts, and I, I swear to you, I've been trying to like find a track. The only thing I could do that makes any sense for this those of you who used to watch sound demos are probably getting nostalgic now. Left, right, left. I still do them if you come to the sound demo part of the $5 Patreon, um, where you get to see reviews early, participate in yarn sales, and all the sound demos that were there on YouTube are there, and all new ones are there forever. So now I've got, let's see, ma minimum crossfeed, 75 degrees angularity. And it's, what this sounds like it's doing is it's... Left, hold on, I'm going to go. Left, right, left, right. It sounds like it's bringing the speakers closer to me. It's so weird. Because, right. I mean, that's just got to be it narrowing the center. Left, right, yeah, at negative two, it's like... Ugh, it feels like sound has come up behind me. Right. And I was like, what the fuck? So now I have not just this adjustment or this adjustment, but also this adjustment. It's like, why does this... That's very pedantic. That's someone who needs to fuck with things. And then, switch to my speakers or studio monitors or other headphone amp. Oh, tongue center on it. Hold on, let's make sure we're all down. No, that was the volume fix. Let's fix. Let's fix the fix before we lose the fix. The wires were similar colors. You can't blame me. Right, left, right, left, right, left. And it does feed through all these effects. I'm going to call them effects, but it's German effects where it's like none of this is the IFI bass boost. None of this is X space. This is science and math being applied to music in a very German way. And like, I can't recommend this for someone who doesn't know what these things feel like. Go find a free plugin for FUBAR or fucking whatever the hell else you use. I don't think iTunes will have it because they suck. Um, but go find a free plugin that'll demo these types of things. Because having it hardware-based means that any source can be used all three sources you could have a, a mixing console a computer and a fucking old ipod from the 70s wow old ipod from the 90s 
guess they didn't make iPods in the 70s unless I just slipped up and really revealed what the CIA has been doing in the 70s. Anyway, you would have all your sources and it doesn't matter because a computer can emulate what this is doing with plugins specifically via software via usually only one piece of software. So I open up a movie, a media player classic, it's not going to take any of these things. Having it hardware based is what you're paying for. You're paying for a relatively fucking kick-ass headphone amplifier. Again, tungsten are abnormal. Don't judge anything on tungsten. But coming out of this is very German. Coming out the back is very clean and German. It's not a DAC. It's just all analog fuckery. AAF, all analog fuckery. In fact, if I start a speaker business, EOS, AAF, speakers or fucking sound or AAF audio. I don't know. And no one will know what it means unless I check this particular particular video. I'll never stay it in anything. Yeah, we're, we're AAF. I'm done with this track. I can't. I'm gonna fucking go sterile. Oh, hell yeah. Your sex is a dream from Trevor something. I downloaded... This is from the 80s dream compilation. I went to... In fact, Zios could be a bro in the future. And link in the description, because you guys really need to check the descriptions. I will link to Bandcamp and the results page for all of the free fucking um, retro, new retro wave that they had. I found every artist who had free albums. So like, ah, fuck it. Don't pay us anything. Just give it to us. I downloaded like 180 songs. And this is on there. And you know what you do? You go back to that artist, which you actually like, because you've been listening to it now for three or four months. You go, I'm going to see what else I got and buy it. That's why I like Bandcamp. Anyway, back to Trevor something, your sex is a dream. Now, keep in mind what my thoughts are on these headphones. They're not the most fun. They're certainly better than the sterility that was like the 1266. But the data is always need a little bit more something. They need something. And I think the reason this was purchased by the by the guy is because he's got lots of headphones that need that something. So because this is set to all, even though the crossfade is on crossfade is on minimum, we're at 55, so I brought it in, and we're at negative two or 0.12, so that is slightly pushed down. And this sounds really fucking good. Yeah, it just it's it takes like if the sound is like a ball in your head, just squeeze it and it pops out either side of your hand. And that's what these current settings have it doing. It's just relaxing that fucking focus. It's like, ah. So even though it's not technically soundstage, it's changing. It is changing inside your head like a physicist is going, no, 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 not, not like this, like this. Now, if I change these knobs a little more... I'll do it while it's pause. That'll be that'll be fun. Okay. See now, now when I go to off, when I shut off all the effects, it sounds normal. And when I put it to on or all, it instead of it sounding like a little bit further away or not a ball anymore, now it sounds vertical. Like it sounds like something squished, and it's just it's almost it's almost mono, but only in certain frequency. Like I have no fucking idea how to even tell you to describe because again we're running this is out the back side so this could run into a tube amp and then that tube amp could preamp another amp and, and I, by the way i'm feeding this entire thing just with the j2 because with all the options and the swapped things that's a high-end DAC. it goes from like an under 300 dollars like oh hobbyist DAC that someone makes with love and care and they make the oh, wait did you get a wood case oh it's 50 bucks or 60 bucks oh you want the sockets and the usb well, that's 200 it's like a 750 dollars jds uh um, jds labs Gishelli labs DAC. jds labs also has a DAC here right there we're gonna play with that one later so there's a serious DAC running seriously different op amps that are just mwah, going into this very precise German piece of essentially acoustical science equipment and then pushing either the line outs and diffusing the sound through that into another amplifier or going straight out the, the gate and you get to flip it back to the oh, it's so much more comfortable than those fucking Dianas. Jesus. Oh, I love the red. That would be a nice thing to include a button that also learns mute because again, we can go back to headphone, unpause it, and volume up. Oh. Uh, 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 
that's the difference between uh, this. This is like the ultimate def difference between. Well, actually, this would be the four thousand dollar. I'd like to thank GoPro for having battery. Actually, I tried to have this thing externally powered from the ceiling so that it wouldn't die mid review. And you know what it did? It didn't work. It just literally wouldn't start if I was powering it externally. And I know it should. It was just that particular really expensive anchor charger just wouldn't work. Anyway, I, I, that's the sign for me to, to, to wrap this up because I'm probably rambling for like 35 minutes. This is a strange fucking amp. And it's one of those German strange fucking amps. And automatically you're like, I'm interested in this. Hmm. Let's see if the bottom has anything before I move off of this. Nope. Just feet and then an access port to dip switches, which I dare not touch. Anytime there's dip switches in the bottom of a German device, don't. That's my advice. My other... All right. The final concern... Uh, I had this on my desk for a couple weeks to listen to it while I was doing other reviews, and I've had to do this. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. Please don't break. There we go. So the rear of it is now four and a half fucking inches off the back, or a decimeter off the back. I, I talked to my Canadians, and they're like, they don't decimeter. No one uses decimeter. I'm like, well, guess what? It's the it's that big. But like, I, I would love to use that as a, as a threat. Like, I've got one inch of patience left. But no, I got more than that. I got one decimeter of patience left with you fucks. Anyway, yeah, this is too deep. It's way too deep. It doesn't match any shelves. And it's as deep as tube amps. It's the only thing I could say that would function with it. This fucking thing is a half an arm long. I don't mind the height. I don't mind the width. It seems like it'll fit in like a 2U rack space if you had it. But the depth is just out of this world. It's, it's, it's deeper than it is wide. And that's... That's not even normal equipment sort of thing. I haven't, I don't think I have another piece of equipment here that follows that design cue. Not even the tour is still wider than it is deep. This thing is, why? Why? Come on, it doesn't weigh that much. And I've seen pictures of the inside of it, at least some pictures of the inside of it. Hold on, show me your insides. Yeah, I, you know, that's why it's got the giant thing. But that's a power supply board. And we've got like these vertical boards in there. I feel like, they spread it out a lot, and they could probably could have folded it in half and then made this like half as deep. We need to up the density, Germany. What exactly, if you want to read about what exactly the 120 volt system does, you can. And also, all these graphs are fucking bullshit. Well, that one's not a lot there. This one claims there's a 33 decibel level DPU. It's a maximum level. And I'm not sure if that means out of the XLRs or out of the headphone amp. But dynamic range, they just start chose to start it at 129 and 145, so it looks like a massive difference. And it's negative 114 THD instead of 106, but every amplifier is better than that now. That is the lamest looking German build. Actually, you know what? I, I can't say that. I love the look of that German building. It almost seems too nice. Like I want more a more rigid industrial thing. It's got wood. God, I could tell how fucking nice that building is to be inside of. After being in Germany, my hotel room windows they were like seven feet tall and only this wide. When you opened it, it was like a cube of just insulation and latch work. Oh, God. Um, anyway, SPL Fonitor 2. Who the fuck needs this? People who are done. I say this for a lot of things. People who are done getting all their, all their headphones are already purchased. All their speakers are already set up. They're satisfied with their amplification. They love their DAC. Whatever their story is, they're basically done. And they're just sitting there scratching their very, very well-groomed beards going, what else should I buy? I should buy a thing. I should buy something to, to further my enjoyment of my music hobby. This. You get, a, you get a Black Ice Audio F360 for the tube version of it. Or you get this German extremely precise version, or you be a dick and you plug one into the other. In fact, you could even get the cheap little $550 black ice, uh, the Foz, and you feed that into, actually, yeah, you feed that into this. So you have the tube fucking with soundstage followed by the accurate German fucking with soundstage, and you plug it into something fucking else. I don't care. Something American. We've got American, German, get some Italian and some Japanese headphones and we'll have the entirety of World War II just enjoying themselves. The fucking, that's peace for you, baby. That is peace. We're in peacetime. All these fucking former, I just watched Oppenheimer again. All these former enemies just working together to bring music to your face. 
I don't know Romania was even a thing then, but they're here. Um, wallpaper Horde. It, uh, the question is that I didn't answer through this entire fucking rambling ass video. Is it a good headphone amp? Fuck yeah. It's a $2,000 German box. Literally, I could buy a box of chocolate if it's from Germany and $2,000. If I fucking jam a quarter inch into it, it's going to play headphones beautifully. Don't question it. Um, as a preamp, it's as clean as any preamp you could hope for. The volume control on any remote is fucking awesome. Hey, China, I know you're listening, China. They're always listening. They're in the app. They're in the uh, Alexis. Um, I would love the ability to take any remote. It's a, basically a FLIRC built into the unit. You need a, and, and guess what? Chinese shit has screens. So you could literally go in there and assign things easily instead of like waiting for 97 blinks and beeps and boops before it can do a thing. But then you could just program any remote to control. And I'll be great. That's That, that might be worth a thousand dollars on its own. And then you get all this, just all of this. If you're paying a thousand for the ability to adjust it with remote control, a thousand for it to be made in Germany, a thousand for it to be a clean and good preamp, just preamp, then you're getting the thousand dollars worth of fuckery and adjustment for free. So there you go. Um, I might bring this over to the speaker testing arena. I might, but I'm not sure. I'd have to know. Also, just steel. Beautiful machined aluminum facade, which, oh, almost forgot the most important fucking thing. Oh my God. Although you probably saw it on, where the fuck did I go? Yeah, look, look, these have three colors. This should be available in three colors somewhere. This boring ass black, come on, Mimic, a fucking red, red, and then that silver, which is, it might be best in silver. I don't know. Take your pick. Do you want silver? Black is boring. Or, um... Red. Oh, red. See, that automatically make. Well, also, here's the thing. Strangely enough, bright colors and equipment that isn't boring seems to exist more in the pro world than the fucking audiophile world. What's wrong with you people? Why does Dead Mouse get a fucking wall of colorful amplifiers and mixers and phasers and all these other shits? And we have to stuck with. Well, I mean, I'm, I literally want to point at silver, which is fine, and fucking. Thank God Shelly Labs exists because holy fuck Purple Heart. That feels like something I want to listen to music out of. This is like, even the, the Quest Style 15 is just like, eh. Put a big titty waifu on the cover of it because maybe it'll make it interesting. So I approve of the look. I approve of the feel. I approve of the sound. We're done. I'm going to have to now sit down with the socketed to Shelly Labs, swap to one more set of op amps and give that a review. Maybe combine with some other DAX that I don't think anyone's going to care about, but wallpaper in the horde. Patreon subscribers do support this channel. Again, one of you patrons sent this to me, and then I'm going to ship it back to you fucking insured. So if you want to pay for the shipping that I do every month, not just for this, but also for yard sales, because yard sales, really, for $5 a month, see reviews early, and you get to see them for a while because I'm making more than I'm putting out. I'm taking it in, taking it in before more than I'm putting out. There's a sex joke in there somewhere. Anyway, so there's tons of videos you probably could be able to see if I'm hoping to do work in the future that are not going to be available for public for quite a while. So get on that. Um, yard sales, first to the 10th of every month, I sell things and I use the money you use to support me to ship them to you for free for the first of the, from the uh, continent of the United States and Canada. Anywhere else in the world, I will cut the shipping cost in half. Um, I recently shipped to Greenland or South Africa or Egypt, and if it's $171, I'll have that. I'll pay half of what I... Don't make me do the math on that, please. $171, uh, Shut up. Um, anyway, I'll pay half shipping international on any items you win. Just bid an odd number so that no one matches. Don't bid 50 and 50, and don't bid 69, 69, and 69. That's everyone's fucking bid. Make it 69.71 and you're guaranteed to beat like 10 people. Um, but anyway, that's yard sales, first or the 10th of every month for other things, not this. And then sound demos. I was talking about sound demos. You can get to the sound demos. They exist still. They're not on YouTube anymore. A copyright strike came in for a 2016 Beats solo fucking sound demo that still existed on this main channel. And they copyright striked me. Someone wrote paperwork out for a fucking Beats. A fucking Beats? Are you kidding me? 
And it was Sony Japan, which was a Monogatari track, which is like a thing. Anyway, so that's $5 a month. For $10 a month, which gets you all those other benefits, you also get a new private behind-the-scenes Telegram chat with me. You can ask me questions directly. You can say, hey, Zeus, what's up? Hey, Zeus, what this do? Hey, Zeus, what that do? Hey, Zeus, why don't you put these IMs in? Even though I just wanted to show them off and remind people that Inner Fetish exists and that my tips, the render tips, can sometimes make he uh, headphones, well, not headphones, but IMs sound glorious. Let me accidentally borrow this for a split second and not die. Set that to not die. We paused. I will say, I'm glad I did this at the very end. IMs are not, I'm fucking loud there. If I pause this and risk my hearing and turn it up to halfway, there is noise floor. And if I go past that, uh, 120 volts is getting ready to snap my fucking eardrums in half. So you can use it with IMs, just I would even go down another fucking, wait, I that's as low as it goes now. So now if I unpause this, nope, now it's loud there. <laughs> I can take it to half without dying by lowering that all the way. So you can use it for IMs, it's just so fucking powerful, why would you? Um, yeah, so $10 a month, uh, chat, talk to me, talk to other people, get into a lifetime swap me channel to buy, sell, and trade gear, which comes very handy when it's time to buy a new thing, or you want to buy this, and you want to sell all these things to get this, or you know you're done with this, you played around, it wasn't really your thing, and you instead you want to buy that, so you sell this to buy that, swap me for life, all right? As long as Telegram exists as a service, you'll be in there. Um, wallpaper and the Wallpaper Horde, which gives you all the wallpapers, all in one big synced thing between... 2,000 users, and uh, I think we're done. I'll link to everything. Didn't put a mouse pad down. It was getting too confusing on my brain. So um, this is much better. In fact, I might even go back to listening to these on this. Although, like I said, why the fuck would you? And if you want to shut it off, you got to give it the old reach around. I'm Zeus Pantera. I'll see you later. Alligator.